Wait, this episode's gonna be like super intense, I feel like. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast. I'm your host, Kelly. And I'm Trisha. Today, we're talking about unexplained occurrences and mm-hmm. gut feelings. But I have a story that leads into it, kind of. Okay, here's my life update. Last week, I went to the ER. <gasps> Wait, <laughs> For really? The first time. Wait, yeah. so did I. Wait, what? <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Wait. That's so weird because this episode is like unexplained like occurrences and coincidences. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> this is not... We didn't know this. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Because I was going to text you last week when I went. Yeah. I went a week ago and then I was like, wait, no, I want to just like tell her on the podcast yeah. and get her opinion as a nurse. Oh my god. Okay, wait, you can you can tell your story. And Mine's like not that exciting. No, neither is mine. Okay, that's, you go first. Okay. You go first. Okay, yeah, mine's not like exciting. It just was a unfortunate like workplace occurrence that happened I had like um I don't know how much I'm allowed to say I was exposed to fluids that could have potentially like infected me (gasps) oh my god yeah at work yeah oh it happens a lot Trisha is a nurse by the way yeah yeah so I was at work it was night shift I was like exposed on the job during my shift in a way that like my body could have actually like taken in some kind of infection because like if you get splashed or anything and it just hits your skin your odds of like infection transmission are a lot lower but if it hits like a mucous membrane or if it's an open cut or something you're at higher risk so I just had to it's just like routine you go to the ER for like blood work just to make sure that you're good (laughs) so I had to I had to run down to the ED we call it the emergency department ED oh Um, yes yeah so I had to run down to the ED just for about like two hours get some blood work done and then I went back to work (laughs) wow I was cracking up though my sister Julia I was texting my sisters I was like I just need to let someone know in case I I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm in the emergency room right now. I'm probably fine. I just want to let someone know. <laughs> and then Julia texts back. She's like, well, that's convenient that you're already at the hospital and there's an emergency <laughs> room right there. And I'm like, Julia, it wouldn't have happened if I oh, was yeah. at work. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I'm OK, though. Wow. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. Well, it's okay. <laughs> if you're feeling like you might have given too much away, I have no idea what this situation was, okay. given what you just said. So I cool. think you're safe. Thank you. <laughs> I have a guess in my head that you don't have to confirm or deny, but I feel like did something like hit you in the eye or the mouth? The eye. Oh, God. Yeah. Terrifying. I had to take out one of my contacts and I almost took out the other one just because I'm I just went one, two. Yeah. And then I stopped myself because I was like, wait, I still had like seven hours left of my shift. And I was like, if I take out my other contact, I will be blind for the whole shift. Plus, I won't be able to drive home. Yeah. I usually have a backup set of glasses with me. And of course, I didn't have them at the time. Yeah. So I just went through the rest of my shift, like one contact and everything was like double. I just kept like uh. covering my my blind eye to keep it closed yeah. while I was like reading my computer and stuff. Wow. <laughs> wait, what's your prescription for contacts? I'm negative. Negative 2.5. So your eyes were two and a half steps off each other. That's hard. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Well, I'm glad you're okay. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Crazy. Wait, that's so (laughs) weird. What day did you go? It was Thursday night. Okay. I went Wednesday. (gasps) So close. Wow. Oh my God. (laughs) Okay. My story is not exciting either, but all day when I was working, I had this weird pain that felt like it was in my heart. It wasn't bad enough that I was always thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Like the pain would come to my mind and then I'd be like, oh, that feels weird. And then my mind would just like continue on with my other thoughts. And then I went on a walk with a friend of mine for like two and a half hours, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't strenuous or anything. But when I got home, this pain in my heart was so much more intense. Oh, that's scary. It was so scary. And it wasn't even like, I wanted to say chest pain, but it didn't feel like it was coming from the middle. It felt like it was right where my heart was. Okay. And then I was like, okay, this is weird. I've never had this feeling before. And then it started like pulsating, but it was like a slow, I learned the term waxing and waning from the doctor. Yes. Yes. Because I was trying to describe how it felt, and I was like, it feels like if someone was squeezing, and then they would let go, but they wouldn't let go all the way, and then they would squeeze it. He's like, waxing and waning. (laughs) I was like, okay. (laughs) I've never been here before. I'm so sorry. sorry. Yeah, so I got home from this walk, was feeling that way, 
my sister's a nurse as well and I was like I have this pain in my heart like what is happening she got her stethoscope and listened to my heart and my lungs and she's like it sounds normal mm-hmm. and I'm like okay but this has been going on all day yeah and I have been having a lot of anxiety for the past few weeks so I'm like okay maybe I'm just having anxiety but my chronic anxiety is a different feeling it's mm-hmm. like a heaviness in my chest and I'm like oh I've been having anxiety anyway so I know what that feels like Mm -hmm. and then this felt like it was in my heart (laughs) and I started getting so nervous and then I texted our other cousin who's Mm -hmm. also a nurse and she didn't say like oh don't worry about it or she didn't say like wait and see what happens my sister was kind of like okay wait and see if it's bad tomorrow morning and if it is then go to the hospital our other cousin has like a very intense knowledge of yes. cardiac and like heart issues. Yes. Yeah. She is so I feel like she could almost be a doctor. Or if she She's went to med smart. school. Yeah, yeah. She went to med school, she could probably excel at this point in her life because mm-hmm. she she has so much knowledge. So mm-hmm. I texted her immediately and she was like asking me questions, trying to diagnose. But the things that she was asking me, I'm like, no, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, should I go to the ER? My dad thinks I should. And then she's like, I'm never going to tell you not to go right. if you feel that you should. And I was like, OK. So I went to the ER. My dad took me and I was almost nervous to tell them the symptoms Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to like overshoot it and make it seem like more dramatic but my dad's like it's like there's a sign as soon as you walk in that says if you're having chest pains or you think you're having a heart attack talk to a nurse immediately like don't wait in line and I was like waiting in line and he's like you need to tell someone right now before I left my house I was getting nervous so I looked up the symptoms of a heart attack and it was like pain in your arm Mm -hmm. and then I had gone on a ski trip the weekend before and I hurt my elbow like I just fell really hard on my arm so my elbow was hurting anyway and then when my dad was talking to me about the chest pain I started like spiraling and my arm was hurting and then I'm like oh my god my pain in my arm is like getting bigger Mm -hmm. and more intense and then I'm like am I just imagining this and like making this happen or am I like literally having a heart attack at the age of 26 like what is happening and then I started getting so scared and my dad is like the least dramatic person yeah he's so calm yeah (laughs) and as soon as I told him what was happening he's like we should probably go to the ER yeah and I was like oh shit so then I got scared because my dad didn't say like oh it's probably nothing right and then yeah so wait can I just say my dad always says like call the police yeah never be afraid to like call the police or go to the ER or like anything like that like because even if you think you're overreacting and it's nothing like first off like that's a really easy situation for like the police to handle oh so true as opposed to like something that's uh scarier or like difficult for them to handle like it's a it's a good call to get when it turns out yeah. to be nothing and, that's such and a good like point. yeah at the hospital like if it turns out to be nothing like that's really good for every involved it's like less that's so true and stress for us it's yeah less stress for you so don't ever think you're overreacting just go like better to be safe wow. than sorry I love that yeah. yes <laughs> yeah so that's kind of what my dad was saying too when mm-hmm. we were driving there and got there they called me back there was so many people there I'm I was sure. like yeah this is crazy it, it's sad because I feel like the hospitals are like understaffed mm-hmm. and then People that actually need help have to wait so long. Right. It's so sad. Yeah. So, yeah, they took me back after a few minutes and did an EKG and a blood test. Mm-hmm. And then I came back to my dad, who was in the waiting room. And he's like, I just heard the woman next to you say that she's been here for five hours. And I was like, oh, that sucks. Because yeah. it was already like 730 when we got there. And I was hoping that we wouldn't have to sit there for five hours yeah. but that ended up happening oh, and God. yeah and they didn't call me back for a very long time so my dad and I were kind of like at least that means it's probably nothing right because if there was a problem you'd be the first one taken mm-hmm. in and the nurse I actually know a nurse that works there she went to nursing school with my sister so the nurse that was helping me seemed really nice and I asked her if she knew my friend and so she was talking to me and she's like oh yeah like I I wish every patient was like you, just like relaxed and not mean and demanding. Mm -hmm. And she's like, because some people come in here and they're like, I just saw that kid get taken back before Before me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that child wasn't breathing. And if they weren't taken back, they would have died. This is what she was saying. She's like, people don't understand that when someone's taken in before you, that's because they are in a life or death situation. 
And if they're not taken back before you, they could die. Mm-hmm. So that means they're in a lot worse of a place than you are. And I was like, that's a good way yeah. to think about it. It's not like you're waiting in a restaurant. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, if you're taken back first, you're not in a good place. Like, mm-hmm. you do not want to be the one that's taken back right. first. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn. That puts it in perspective, too. When yeah. I see all the other people going back before me. And it made me so sad to see everyone yeah. in there. And then, of course, by the time I saw the doctor... The pain was not as intense because I had waited four hours in the <laughs> in the waiting room and it was just a slight pain mm-hmm. and they did not tell me anything. They were like, you're fine. Everything is normal and you might be having anxiety or heartburn or whatever. And I was like, awesome. Yeah. Like part of me actually wanted them to tell me what was wrong because yeah. I'm like, I feel like this was a waste of time mm-hmm. if nothing's wrong with me. But then I'm like, I also don't want anything to be wrong with me. Right. And my dad kept, I kind of was like apologizing the whole time. I was like, I feel like this was dramatic and like whatever. And my dad's like, that's why you're here to right. find out. Like it's right. fine. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Cool. You would have gotten no sleep that night if yeah. you didn't go. Yeah. And, and then wondering. Yeah. Exactly. And they told me that the chances of it being cardiac are slim to none because of all the test results they got and my age and everything. And I was like, okay. So I think I was, well, I don't know what it was, but then I was definitely panicking in the moments leading up to leaving for the ER. Mm hmm. But when I was leaving for the ER, I must say that it did cross my mind to make a TikTok of, like, get ready to go to the ER with me Stop. and, like, pack my bag. Is that so stupid? Did you do it? No, because oh. then, it, like, <laughs> that thought came to my mind when I was, because I did get my bag because I had work to do. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. let's say I'm sitting there for five hours, which I was. I was like, I might as well just bring my laptop and a book. And then... I was packing the bag and I was like, oh, this would be a funny TikTok. And I was like, I think I'm having a heart attack right now. Like, I need to go. I was like, why did that even come to my mind? Mm -hmm. But whatever. I didn't do it. And it was fine. I feel like making a joke of it would have been like karma would have gotten you or something. You would have been like jinxing yourself. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) When they took the blood, they Mm -hmm. put the needle in with like the little tube. And then they left it in the whole time. So I just have a needle in my arm for five hours. And that hurts so bad. Oh, like an IV? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant like blood work. Oh, where they no. like took your blood and just like left it there. I was like, wait, no they way. did. They left the. Well, like, I guess it was technically an. Well, I don't really know what it was, but it was probably an IV. I'll show you the picture. Yeah, I took a picture of it. I asked the nurse if it had to stay in, and she was like, "Well, it's easier if you, if they need to take more blood later, or if they need to give you fluids." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay." And she's an like, IV. "Does it hurt?" And I was like, "Kinda." And she was like, "I feel like the pain will wear off. Like, just oh, kind of get used uh. to it." And I was like, "Okay." That's what it was. Yeah, that's an IV. Okay. So it's, like, safest for everyone to have an IV. Like, I don't work in the emergency room. I work in an inpatient unit. And every single person has to have some type of intravenous access. Oh, okay. Which is what IV stands for, intravenous. Right. So we can put medication through it, and that's, like, the fastest way to get the effects of a medication to work is if Got it goes it. into your vein directly in your bloodstream. So if there's an emergency, someone needs, like quick medication we will have yeah. the easiest way to get the medication into them they don't have to chew swallow be awake and you know yeah. what i mean we could just give them whatever they need so if they're if some- unconscious or anything if someone's in the hospital for like days or a week are they do they have an iv in their arm the entire time yes isn't that so uncomfortable though like i could feel the needle if i yeah. bent my arm yeah so it depends on where it is i switched an iv for someone the other day because it was in their like elbow area it's called the anticubital so ac wow, but i'm learning so <laughs> much right now this is so interesting um the your inside of your elbow is like the where big veins are so it's okay. just like you're almost guaranteed to get the IV right into a vein when you try and it's like fast you just so I feel like people who work in the emergency room they just when they draw blood they go for your AC when they stick an IV in you they go for your AC because it's almost guaranteed yeah but it's in a joint so every time you bend your arm it can hurt or it can actually like cause the IV not to work as well if you're bending oh, your arm a lot yeah it just doesn't last as long so sometimes if it's like in your forearm or your hand it might be better like pain wise and then also like it might last a little bit longer interesting but some like people's veins are there I mean everyone has the same vein like set up but sometimes they're slightly to the right or maybe they like they branch off into two like earlier or like closer to your hand or yeah. something you know like it's not like you don't know exactly where people's veins are yeah. sometimes, but your like elbow is like a really good spot to go. 
interesting so that's probably why they just stuck like yeah. people who come up from the ed to our floor always have ivs in their uh like elbow area just because yeah it seems like it's the easiest but yeah um we have to have like a special order from doctors if people don't have an iv and they're still considered like a patient of ours oh we have to have a special order that says like okay to be like admitted without an iv wow yeah so interesting yeah when she pulled the needle out when i was leaving mm-hmm. it was huge it was so long. Yeah, and it's just a plastic little, like, tube. Oh, the needle, though. The needle that she used to put it in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that plastic? No, no, the needle's metal. Oh. But when they, when they place it, the needle comes out and the plastic stays in your arm. And it's like Forever? Little... No, no. Oh, wait. Well, okay, I think I'm describing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> thing... I'm probably being confusing, too. <laughs> it's like the metal part that they yeah. put in. Yeah. And then that's the thing that stayed in my arm the whole time. No. Okay, what stays inside? So when you place an IV, you have, like, a metal needle. Okay. Um, so that you're able to, like, pierce someone's skin, you know? Got it, yeah. And then around the needle is, like, a tiny, tiny little straw. Oh, that's okay. That's flexible. Oh. So um, when you put the needle into the arm, the straw around it also goes into the arm. Okay. And you can retract the needle, like, take it out Got of the it. arm, but the straw... The flexible straw stays in your vein, and that is how we got it. get like fluids and medication in. It goes okay. into this little straw, and then it goes floats into your bloodstream. That makes sense. Okay. Can you picture that? Yes. Did I explain that? Yes, well? okay. you did. Because a lot of people actually are scared of IVs because they think the needle stays in them yeah, the whole time. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I'll sometimes bring an IV needle out, and I'll just show them like when I take the needle out, like what it looks like yeah. outside of their arm. Like I'll hold it up to them and be like, "This is what's in your arm oh. right now," and it, you, it's like flexible plastic, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it feels like a needle though when you well yeah, when I'm I was sure. bending yeah. my arm. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, that plastic, like, straw part yeah. is so long. Yes. I yeah. thought it was going to be, like, this short. Like, I thought it was going to be a centimeter. And it was, There's like, an inch sizes. or an inch and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it was so long. I was like, holy shit, that was just <laughs> sitting in my body yeah. for the last five hours. <laughs> yeah. And then when they took me back into the room, finally, this nurse came to give me an x-ray. And she made me sit in the wheelchair. She brought it in and she's like, Kelly? And I was like, yes. Hi. And then she's like, come with me for an x-ray. And I was like, should I sit in the wheelchair? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And then she took me there. And I I almost was like, this is so unnecessary. But I guess she didn't know that it was unnecessary. It's probably a safety thing. They don't want you to fall. Yeah. Um, We have to take like crazy fall precautions for everyone in the hospital. Like even if you say you're able to walk for the most part, we'll like trust people. But yeah, I guess in the emergency room, it must be different because if you fall and hit your head, you know, you could have like a stroke or, you know, like it's it's really funny. The safety precautions in a hospital, you never think of them in your day to day life. Yeah. And then like you come to the hospital and we're like, oh, like you're not allowed to do this, 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 because all of these risks that they Right. Pose. And people are shocked. And I'm like, I understand. Like, it's a complete loss of independence when you come to the hospital. Yeah. But there's just so many, like, risks that could happen. So, yeah. yeah. Especially when people are already dealing with health issues. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I almost felt, like, bad because I'm right. like, this woman is pushing me in this wheelchair. And I'm like, I could just walk. But I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to do what she says. Yeah. Like, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I felt so dramatic when the doctor talked to me. He talked to me for, like, maybe 60 seconds. And then he's like, yeah. I'm going to go look at your x-rays. And I was like, OK. And then, oh, yeah. One thing he said was, are you on birth control? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, does it have estrogen in it? And I was like, I guess. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. And then... He's like, it probably does, because I was thinking blood clot, but we'll see. And then he just left. That's terrifying. And I was like, why are you just throwing this terminology Mm -hmm. around? Like, blood clot? Like, that is not what I want to hear when you're walking out the door. And then he didn't come back. You are at higher risk to form clots on certain, like, hormones and stuff. But why would he say it if he wasn't going to test me for it? Right. Or, like, do anything else, give me any more information? I was like, okay, so you were thinking that, so now what? I was like, what? I don't know. I'm not a radiologist, And I don't have experience with, like, reading x-rays and stuff, but maybe you can see a clot on an x-ray. Yeah, my dad and I were debating that because he was in the room with me, and I was like, what can you see in an x-ray? Like, is that going to show my heart? And my dad's like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Did you get a CAT scan? No. Okay. I don't don't know. So (laughs) weird. So weird. I was just like, (laughs) That's scary. He shouldn't have done that. I know. I was like, what? 
okay. <laughs> You're like, right. <laughs> I know. I'm like, and then he's like, do you have a history of panic attacks? And I was like, I mean, I don't really have like full panic attacks. And he's like, anxiety. And I was like, you know, I just have like the normal like anxiety that everyone has. Yeah. And I don't know. I seriously have, I have no idea what it was. I guess it was just anxiety. I hope, but all the tests came back normal. And I was like, that's that's a good thing like I'm like that's what I Mm -hmm. should hope for Mm -hmm. and it was just some weird thing that happened and like our bodies are weird and sometimes they just don't know what's wrong with you so weird I went to the emergency room one time when I was younger I had just gotten surgery on my nose it was like I had a deviated septum oh I forgot that you had that yeah so you go under general anesthesia it's like a small very small surgery but you're under like general anesthesia you're fully out they did a few other things to my nose like I had like polyps and stuff I don't know whatever quick recovery like a week I was fine but at the end of the week, um, like it was like, yeah, a two hour procedure. Like it was quick and easy. But at the end of my week of like, you know, recovering and everything, I did faint in my kitchen. And oh my I kind of like, I guess I might have hit my head. I don't know. But I remember um, my brother was home and he like saw me just fall over. It was only us. <laughs> and he came over and he was like trying to like shake me awake. And I did come back around, but my vision went out for like a few minutes. And I was like, call 911. Like, I can't see. Wait, so you were awake, but everything looked black? Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, could you see anything? No. Stop. It yeah. was like your eyes were closed. Yes. Crazy. For a few minutes. So he helped me to a chair, and then he called my mom, who was out, and then she's like, yeah, if Trish is saying call an ambulance, just call. I, I was not a nurse at this point or anything. Wait, how old were you? I was a sophomore in college. Okay. But I was just freaking out because I was like, I can't see. That is so scary. So we called an ambulance um, and my dad came home from work and like the EMT showed up and then my vision had come back by then. So I don't, I guess it was just like lack of oxygen for a little bit to my eyes possibly. And then I was good. But they were like, okay, we can take you to the hospital. My dad's like, I could drive her. It's fine. He had to like sign a paper promising that he will take me to the hospital if I'm refusing the ambulance. Wow. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. I didn't realize. But we went to the emergency room and they took me back, did all like a workup for everything. We were just concerned because I had just had surgery like five days prior. So who knows if it was like related to that. And like anesthesia is kind of weird for people sometimes. Like people have weird reactions to it and stuff. So we just went just to be safe. And the doctor came in and he was like you know you don't have to come here every time you faint and I was like excuse me I was like first of all I've never been here (laughs) I didn't say that but I was like right oh my god wait that's insane (laughs) I was shocked (laughs) wait sometimes I feel like well this might be just a generalization but I feel like a lot of people have stories of like weird things doctors said to them I'm sure (laughs) and I know there's a term called bedside manner which is like how you handle patients emotionally right in addition to the care you're giving them Mm -hmm. but there was another time that I went to the doctor it was the gynecologist and he was you know how they feel on your stomach to make sure that like there's not tumors or cysts Mm -hmm. or whatever on your uterus or anywhere he felt something and he was like hmm what is that? And he's like, I thought that was a cyst for a second, but I don't think it is. Oh, and okay. I was like, okay. And then he's like, see you next year. And I'm like, what? I was like, why do doctors just throw out these terms? Like, <laughs> if you don't think it's a problem, that's great. You know what you're talking yeah. about. Like, don't put that in my mind. Right. Yeah. And then thankfully it was nothing. He was right. And it was a doctor that I really, really trust. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I believe him that he knows what he's talking about whatever so I'm like I'm not gonna worry about it but I'm like just don't just don't say that (laughs) wait speaking of weird shit doctors say this is a perfect transition because my friend told me a story and I wrote it down because I was like that is so absurd and I want to get your opinion on it okay so my friend was on this little island like off the coast of Massachusetts or Rhode Island or something so they didn't have this major hospital available to them. Mm -hmm. It's like this island where people do day trips to it. So they were kind of stuck there for the day until like the ferry came back or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my friend is renting a bike and it had like the rusty chain on it, this Mm -hmm. old beach bike. And I think she cut her leg or something on the chain. So Mm -hmm. she needed to get a tennis shot. Yeah. Okay. So this is what she said. She went to the doctor. She had to get a tennis shot. So she goes into the room. The nurse goes, pull your pants down. And she's like, (laughs) what? And the nurse is like, yeah, this is going in your butt. Like, pull your pants down. And she did that. 
And she listened to the nurse and put it in her butt. And then a few years later, her friend went to a different doctor for a tennis shot and asked the doctor and said, out of curiosity, why would you need a shot in your butt? Because that happened to my friend. And the doctor said, tell your friend to get a lawyer. What? Excuse me? Oh, my God. That's I I don't like that either. I know. Like, basically, he was implying that there's no reason that a tennis shot would need to go in your butt and your friend experienced medical malpractice or assault or something. I have never given a shot in a butt. I (laughs) (laughs) um, it is like. We were given diagrams in nursing school of all of the main, like, muscles where you can give shots. Yeah. So, like, the flu shot is considered an intramuscular shot. It has to go somewhere where there's, like, a a muscle. So, people get it in their shoulder. You can get it in your, like, thigh. Okay. So, I've heard of people getting shots in their butts. (laughs) Mostly in, like, other countries, to be honest. I never, like, question it because I don't know what their practice is in, like, other countries. But I have never given one, nor have I ever, like, been told that I have to give one in a butt. Yeah. Or there's, like, so many other options right I don't know if it's if if it's like a lawyer issue type of a thing I don't think that that was like the intention I don't want to say it wasn't but like yeah I've heard of it before and I think that it's allowed and it's like a spot where you would give a shot I don't know right that's so weird though and then for this other doctor to just throw that statement out there and just give no other detail like he's like tell your friend to get a lawyer and like leaves the room yeah I'm like, like all this that. drama and for what? Yeah. Like, why can't you just have a conversation? Like, I get they're busy, but like, yes. why are we throwing these terms around and then just walking out? Right. Like, most people do not understand the medical field and oh, I know. what should yeah. and should not happen. Like, mm-hmm. I have no medical knowledge at all. Right. So when you're throwing around words like cyst and blood clot, I'm like, those are not words I want to hear if you don't think I have a problem. Right. Because I'm going to go home and spiral. I know. Yeah, exactly. I do my best. I mean, there are certain things that I'm like technically just not allowed to say because I'm a nurse, not a doctor. Oh. So like like diagnostic things, like I okay. can't say like you have cancer, I, you know? Okay. I mean? Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. But even when people are freaking out about something that's possibly going wrong, I'll come in, like look at them. And even if I think the worst, which usually your mind has to go to the right. possible worst because then you can start prepping for like what you need to do. I will never say it. Yeah. Like, okay. One second. Like, like, let me check your vital signs real quick. Like, I just try and stay as calm as possible because yeah. it's just not worth it to work people up, especially if they yeah. don't have a good understanding and their mind will just start spiraling. Like, yeah. that doesn't help you if they're freaking out. Right. Um. Yeah. I just do my best to like never say what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Ever. But also the the bedside manner thing. Like, pull your pants down. Like. I know. You know. I don't know. People don't know what to expect when they go to the hospital so just be like okay I'm gonna give you a shot I have to put it into one of your muscles like yeah it's easiest if I go in your like rear end could you just pull down one side of your pants yes instead of just like pull your pants down yeah last thing I will say I can understand sometimes you're in a rush as a nurse so you just come in you're like let me get this done and leave yeah but sometimes it can be a traumatic procedure for people yeah and it's better to give them an explanation ahead of time even if you are in a rush yeah Like, Uh, I'll have to do, I don't know, say I have to give someone, like, a a medication that's in the form of a suppository. What is that? You have to put it? It goes up your butt. Oh, gosh. Okay. Like, that's so creepy and scary for people. So I, even if I'm, like, I have to do this now and then I have to, like, go see someone else real quick, like, I still say, like, this is, I understand that this is uncomfortable and, like, I explain, like, what I'm about to do and stuff. Because it's, like, that's scary to people. Even though it's so easy and quick for me to do. Yeah. People don't understand. I feel like another thing is, like, when you're in a hospital, it's so scary in yes. there. And I realized that I have never been in a hospital. Like, I have not gone to the ER since I was five. Yeah. And then the second time I've ever gone to the ER was when I was 26. So I'm like, I have no idea what's going on here. Yeah. And I was looking around at all the stuff in the room. And I'm like, I don't understand any of this. Yeah. Like, and if someone just came in here and, like, rushed, like, in a way, that's kind of a good thing because it means they know what they're doing mm-hmm. and it's not that serious. But also, it's like when people have no clue what's going on, it's so easy to get scared and yeah. freak out and mm-hmm. just be so uncomfortable in this world that's, like, foreign to you. Yeah. Scary. I felt yeah. so bad for just some of the other people that were in the ER because I'm like, I was literally praying for people. I'm like, this yeah. is just so sad yeah. that everyone in here is like 
experiencing some sort of medical emergency. Yeah, and they're all scared, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So I hope everyone enjoyed that story. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, great, now I'm going to get this insane bill from a hospital yep. and I need to try to monetize this. So if using <laughs> this story is clickbait, we'll get more clicks on our mm-hmm. podcast. I'm OK with that. Yeah. Share it with your friends. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I was sent to the ER for a reason. And that reason might be clickbait. <laughs> Okay, let's get into some unexplained occurrences. I'm excited. I think some of these are involving health, and then some of them are involving gut feelings, and some of them are just crazy coincidences. So I was going to ask you if you have any crazy gut feeling or asking the universe for a sign or crazy coincidences that you've experienced. I couldn't really think of too many other than my lucky number is 23. And I think... Wait, so is mine. We are soul sisters. Oh my God. Why why is yours 23? It's kind of dumb, but when I was in first grade... We were all assigned numbers in alphabetical order, so we had to line up whenever we would go somewhere according yeah. to our number. And I was 23, Aww. and I've just always, like, loved that number, and I was, I kept it with me. First yeah. grade Trish was 23. Wait, I love that. Yeah. My birthday's on the 23rd, so that's why my Oh, is. yeah. And yeah. my boyfriend's birthday is on the 23rd, too. I love it. Just recurring in my life. Yes. I've been seeing 23s everywhere recently. And our 23rd episode came out on February 23rd really? of 2023. Yes. Oh Isn't my that gosh, weird? That is weird. Yes. Coincidence wow. or sign? I don't yeah. know what it would mean, but coincidence? Mm. My only other crazy coincidence story is not mine. I might have already told this on the podcast in the past, but I knew this girl. She was like my friend's little sister's friend. And in high school, she had her retainer in one night and it was one of those plastic and metal ones. And part of the plastic broke off and she swallowed it. So she went to the hospital to get an x-ray and make sure that like it was sitting in the right way that Mm -hmm. it would just come out. And they did an x-ray and found a tumor. (gasps) And I think she had like throat cancer or something. Thankfully, they found it when it was easily removable. But if she didn't go and get an x-ray, they wouldn't have found that. And it would have obviously gotten a lot worse, possibly would have gotten so bad that it was unfixable. And the only reason that she got an x-ray was because she swallowed half of her retainer. And it's like, why did she swallow half of her retainer? Like, why did that randomly happen at that point in her life when she had probably been wearing a retainer for years? Yeah. Oh, my God. So weird. I've heard a few stories like that just from, like, people that I've met. Yeah. Where it's like they have been diagnosed with like I work on an oncology unit so yeah a lot of these people they were diagnosed just like because of something else yeah exactly yeah it's crazy so I actually just went and got blood work done because I'm like how I just can't be surrounded by all of this and not be a little scared yeah you know what I mean so I went and got some routine blood work done I'm all good everything's great but (laughs) I just got blood work done yesterday too nice yeah that's wild I heard this story recently it's like a Chinese proverb or something other people tell it better than me but a farmer he like loses his horse and then everyone's like that's so sad I've heard this yeah recently there's like a really inspirational video of Shia LaBeouf telling the story okay so Look it up if you want to hear a better version than this one. Mm -hmm. But everyone in the town is like, that's so sad. Like, that's so bad. I'm so sorry. And then the next day, his horse comes back and brings 10 more horses with it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, wait, that's so great. And then his son is working on the horse and falls off and breaks his arm. And everyone's like, oh, that's so sad. I'm so Mm -hmm. sorry. But then the government needs new army soldiers and his son is now unable to fight in the army so he doesn't have to get recruited and everyone's like wow that's so great yeah and then just the whole point of the proverb is that when things happen to us we really don't know if they're good or bad until we continue to live our lives Mm -hmm. and look back on it so I feel like there's so many examples of that in like the healthcare field or what you were saying basically because it's like oh if I don't know and I was low-key scared of that too when I had this chest pain because I'm like wait what if this chest pain is just affecting me and then I go in and I have this other problem thankfully I didn't Mm -hmm. but it's so weird that things happen like that oh yeah yeah so the moral of that story was don't label things good or bad just like Mm -hmm. move on with your life and yeah find reasoning later on I guess Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited to read some of these gut stories. Me too. This was Trisha's idea for this episode too. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope these are good ones. <laughs> I love this stuff. Oh, wait. I just thought Do you of have something. One? Yeah. So my sister was rec- not recently, I guess like over a year ago, was in a bad car accident. Yeah. And I remember I had worked night shift. It was on a weekend. Um, the accident happened on a Sunday. I had worked night shift Saturday night into Sunday morning. I came home Sunday morning and was sleeping during the day. Mm-hmm. I don't sleep really well during the day because it's like if I wake up even a little bit and I notice like sunlight, it's like my brain, you know, like it's like, oh, it's time to wake up. Yeah. Even though I'm like, I've only gotten like two hours of sleep. Anyways, very strange. I woke up a little bit. It was like the time that the accident happened. I woke up a little bit and I thought, let me check Julia's location. And I checked her location on my phone and I saw that she was like on some road because I knew she had gone away for the weekend. And I was like, okay, cool. She's driving home. And then I was woken up a few hours later by my older sister saying like, oh, she was in an accident. She's in the hospital now. But I was like, oh, that's so weird. I woke up and checked her location and it was the location of the accident, actually. Yeah. I totally forgot about that until I just heard that. Isn't that strange? That's insane. Yeah. What? (laughs) Side note, we are going to do an episode potentially where Mm -hmm. we talk to Trisha's sister, Julia, about that accident because she was in a coma for a while Mm -hmm. and made a miraculous recovery. Thank God. So it's a very interesting story. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. I, I didn't know. know that. Wow, that like hits close to your yeah. home because like mm-hmm. when you experience it, it's different than if you just hear about it. Right. I know. Weird. Weird. <laughs> oh my God, I just got the chills. <laughs> ah, I hope this episode's like wholesome yeah. and not scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went into septic shock, the real deal. In the ICU, my parents were told, say your goodbyes to your daughter. She won't make it through the night. My wife had left to do laundry right before I crashed, and she blazed through three states to get back to me. I distinctly remember having the best nap of my entire life. Warm but not hot, not cold, just peace. Absolutely just perfect. Then I heard her say, I need you. Not in the, hey, I need a cup of coffee, but like the need, need way. Like the help me, please, I really need you kind of way. So I tried to wake up, but I couldn't. So I just swam. Swimming isn't the right word because it was my mind, not my body. But I tried my best to push towards her voice. Three days later, I woke up with her next to me. She had refused to leave me the entire time. The doctors absolutely saved my body, but I absolutely believe she is the reason I came back to my body. I just got the chance. Me too. Wait, this episode's going to be, like, super intense, I feel like. Oh wow. My God. Oh, my God. It's so weird because I'm just going to, like, keep reading these off. And yeah. I'm, like, every single one of them I could take, like, 10 minutes to, like, process. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! For Julia's episode, she'll explain. But I don't think she has, like, any recollection or yeah. any, any feeling of, like, her coma. But people do say that, like, some – you can sometimes hear, like, voices when you're yeah. in a coma or, like, you know what's going on. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I guess they're all different. It's like different yeah. depths. Mm-hmm. Scary. Yeah, the brain is weird. The brain is crazy. Yeah. My mom didn't die, but my uncle had passed unexpectedly. He knew but didn't tell anyone a few months before I was due. He knew but didn't tell anyone? Like he I guess, knew he was going to die? Yeah, I guess. My mom had been labeled infertile and was told that she was never going to conceive prior to that. I was the surprise baby at 38, my dad being 40, and everyone was incredibly excited. According to my mom, sometime after his funeral, she was sitting at my grandma's house when she heard him laughing from outside. With him was the laughter of a little girl. Fast forward five, holy shit, I have chills all over. With him was the laughter of a little girl. Fast forward five months, and both me and his granddaughter are born on the same day. She says she thinks it was our way of meeting each other, passing on the road. Stop. Oh, my God. I don't even know what to say to these. Neither do I. These are leaving me speechless. (laughs) Me too. You believe in afterlife, right? Yeah. Okay, me too. So crazy. I just can't imagine there's nothing, you know? Yeah. It also scares me too much to even, like, consider that. So I'm like, nope. I feel (laughs) like there's too many signs that prove that there is. Right. Like that. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. also, like, I believe in God, and I just feel like the reason is because there's so many signs. Like, yeah. I feel like I ask God for signs a lot, and I will, mm-hmm. like, look up, and I'll literally be like, 
you're so real for that. <laughs> you are so <laughs> real for that. I'm, Thanks, I'm like, tell me. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I used to do that a lot when I was younger-ish, I guess. I don't really do that as much, but I feel I like should. I feel like it comes in like times where you need answers. Like if you're feeling yeah. content in your life and like your job, your relationship, like whatever, you just don't need to ask for right. signs. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, these were definitely times where I was like feeling very anxious and mm-hmm. I was like, is this a gut feeling or anxiety? Right. I've heard that a way to differentiate between a gut feeling and anxiety is that anxiety provides a problem and a gut feeling provides a solution. So if you're driving like Ooh. over a bridge and you're like, oh my God, what if the bridge falls? What if the bridge falls? Like right. that's anxiety. Mm-hmm. But if you're approaching the bridge and you get a feeling of do not go on the bridge, that's a gut feeling because it's a solution, not a problem. Yeah. And I feel like that is kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel anxiety a lot of like, what if this happens? What? If? But mm-hmm. it's like I never experience a solution. And when yeah. you hear these like gut feeling stories, it's people being like, I got a feeling to do this and I did it. And mm-hmm. then it worked out yeah, or whatever. Like saved them from something. Yeah. yeah. I've also been seeing a lot of stuff on like TikTok recently about intrusive thoughts. Yes. Have intrusive- you too? Yeah. And there was something else. It was like, oh, the difference between like intrusive thoughts and like impulsive thoughts or something like that. Oh, I haven't seen that. Because it was like some people think an intrusive thought is like, what would happen if I just punch this person right now? And like <laughs> they don't do it, but it's like. That's yeah. like an impulsive thought versus like an intrusive thought is like oh interesting different. I don't know, but I'm like I've ex- I mean everyone experiences intrusive thoughts. Yes. I've never had a name for it. I yeah. guess. I but, feel like that's yeah. why it's so popular because everyone's like, wait, yeah. we all have this. Yeah. yeah. Last night I had an intrusive thought and I was like, I could just take those scissors and cut off my hair right now. And yes. Like, Stuff like that. I'm never going to, <laughs> but I could. Right. Yeah. Weird. The brain. It's so weird. <laughs> but with intrusive thoughts, it's like, I or impulsive thoughts, whatever. I, I feel know. like yeah. the difference between those and gut feelings is like when it's an intrusive or impulsive thought, you almost feel like you shouldn't do it. It's more like I could do it or what if I did it, but you don't Mm -hmm. feel like you should. Whereas with a gut feeling, it's like you feel that you should do it immediately. Yeah. Maybe that's a difference. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's very interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. And the gut feeling, it's like we don't know what they are. So it's like anyone's guess is Mm -hmm. as good as what I'm saying right now. Like, I don't know. It's just Mm -hmm. like it's basically just a guess. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. where do they come from? Like, who knows? Our survival mechanisms, maybe. Yeah. Or God. Or God. Or the universe. Yeah. Or both. I also think that both can exist at the same time. I do, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I feel like even stuff with, like, manifestation and people are like, oh, that's not real. But it's like, it is logical and rational if you think about it. Because if I walk around and I'm like, I'm fine being single. I don't want a guy. Like, I just want to be single at this time in my life, do whatever I want. And that's what I'm telling, like, all the people around me. Mm -hmm. If my friends have an amazing single guy, they're going to be like, oh, well, Kelly wants to be single right now. So I'll set this guy up with someone else. Mm -hmm. But if I was walking around saying, I'm happy, but I also really want a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, I really want to find a great guy. When your friend finds a great guy, they're going to think of you. So I'm like, okay, that's like a physical, actual reasoning for manifestation. Right. I feel like another rational example is that in your mind, if you're like, I have a podcast, like my podcast is so successful. It's so good. Like everyone loves my podcast. Mm -hmm. You're going to be more inclined to work hard and create the thing that you want. Yeah. So I feel like it is logical. Right. But then I do think that there is some sort of like spiritual tie to it because if all day, every day you're thinking about this goal that you have, I just think that God and the universe is going to be like, oh, well, let's give it to them because that's what they want. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to ask for what you want Mm -hmm. or tell them what you want. I don't know. Yeah. It's all I think it's all tied together. Yeah. I also I was recently thinking about the one episode where we were like, oh, like fake confidence until it becomes real. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like that goes along with, like, manifestation. Like, you're talking in the present tense as if you have something, and then, like, eventually it does happen. But, like, for the the podcast, like, we're saying that it's great and stuff, and it gives us, like, the confidence to keep going and the motivation to keep going. Yeah, exactly. It is a great podcast. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it just becomes, like, what it was always meant to be. I don't know. Yeah. I know what I'm trying to say. No, I agree. I think your thoughts are your reality. So the more you think something, the more it's going to be true. Mm -hmm. 
Like, also because our reality is just our perception of reality. Right. And that's why everyone's reality is different. And it's like, I heard someone else talking about this. It was on the What We Said podcast. Uh Trish and I are big fans of What We Said podcast. We love them. It's very entertaining. Yeah. And one thing that they were saying, I think this was like years ago at this point, but they were saying like people that walk around saying Kim Kardashian needs to snap back to reality or like get a reality check. And it's like she's in tune with her own reality. Her reality is different than mine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I remember that. So like that kind of makes sense in a way. Like I get what people mean by that. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, you should realize that other people aren't as privileged or like whatever. But it's like everyone's reality is just their own perception of reality. Yeah. And it's all they know. Yeah. Like (laughs) exactly. Exactly. So instead of saying get a reality check, maybe it's more it's like people are really trying to say experience somebody else's reality for once or like open your mind to somebody else's reality which I think is fine too but I don't know I feel like with the affirmations thing Mm -hmm. it's like if I walk around being like I'm ugly I'm stupid blah 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 you believe the thoughts that you tell your brain Mm -hmm. and so you're gonna then start believing that and since your reality is just your perception you're gonna start believing that and in your mind it's going to be true because it's your perception of reality. So whether it's true to other people or not doesn't matter. Right. Because it's true to you. Same thing with positive affirmations. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. So if I'm walking around and I'm like, I'm amazing. And it's not like I'm like saying this to other people. I'm just saying it to myself. Like, I am powerful. I am strong. Like, I am able. I am worthy. That's what's going to become true in my perception of reality, which is the only thing that matters to me. So, like, if other people are out here thinking that I'm ugly or I'm annoying or whatever, that doesn't affect me. That's not real Mm -hmm. to me. It's only real if I think it's real. Yeah. So I'm going to be positive. And that's why there's so many people on TikTok being like, oh, be delusional and, like, tell yourself that you have everything you want and, like, you're worthy of this amazing life and you're so successful. And I'm like, I live my best life when I'm doing that. Yeah. So I'm going to continue to do it. You talk to yourself more than anyone else in the world, in your life. I read that on a shampoo bottle once. (laughs) Wow. Dropping bombs. Yeah. On the shampoo bottle. Well, actually, what it was is little, like, fun facts on a shampoo bottle. And I was, like, reading it in the shower. And one of them was, like, a question, like, who do you talk to the most in your life? And I was, like, (laughs) I was younger. So I'm, like, I don't know, my mom maybe. Like, (laughs) yeah. My friends. Could not figure it out. And then I flip it over and it's, like, yourself. I was, like, wow. (laughs) <laughs> they <Deep>. got you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, that's so true yeah. though. I used to think it was weird to talk to yourself and now mm-hmm. I talk to myself a lot. Like yeah. especially if I'm feeling anxious yeah. or scared, I will literally be like, it's fine. We're fine. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it out loud. For anxiety, I was told to say, what's the worst that could happen when oh, you're freaking really? out? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think that would help me. Oh, really? I have weird like little things that give me a lot of anxiety and like actual panic attacks. I've had yeah. It's like a panic disorder, I guess. Um, but I ha- I was told, like, this is so weird. I get really freaked out by, like, wind, especially with umbrellas. Interesting. Okay. Just exposing myself here. But I hate being on the beach when it's windy and umbrellas are, like, flying around because I'm just, like, it's going to uh, flip inside out and fly away. And for some reason, that puts me into a panic. I mean, like, it can be dangerous. It people have died yeah (laughs) but that's not it's not even the fear of being impaled it's just like i'm gonna lose this umbrella forever it's gonna fly into oblivion like (laughs) i'm sorry to be laughing no no, it's fine it's so ridiculous i have other weird things too i can divulge them later but (laughs) yeah that's like one example but then i was told to tell myself like well what's actually the worst that would happen and it's like maybe it um it falls over interesting and it has helped me so much i'm like okay the umbrella is blowing around the wind right now the worst that could happen is it blows over maybe tumbles a little bit like down the beach but what if that's not the worst thing that happens oh I know like what if the worst because when you said the worst I'm like oh we all die but like that's (laughs) not reasonable yeah I guess it's like reasonable yeah you have to yeah exactly it helps with when you can like reason with it and yeah I don't know yeah it's hard to explain I guess but yeah yeah. like it's more like like a realistic like what is actually going to happen yeah because I have like irrational thoughts that cause the anxiety right yeah yes like I said like the umbrella will literally disappear into like outer space and for some reason (laughs) 
that scares me <laughs> a lot yeah it's that's just very like, interesting that your mind goes to that yeah it's like almost like a thought of infinity or something yes. like that like um another one that I don't like is when buildings like shake a lot oh and God, I can yeah. feel it in my feet I'm like I'm going to fall through and just keep falling oh interesting yeah it's it's strange but then I'm like okay what's the worst that could happen I, I don't know the this these buildings are all not going to fall down right now just because like yeah it's I don't know there's a truck going by that's like rattling the windows like yeah. it's not gonna make a building collapse I was having such a spiral moment similar to that recently yeah. I was in an Airbnb and the house that we were staying in was built in the 1800s uh-huh. and I was in this bedroom on the first floor and all of a sudden I was like oh my god what if the whole house collapses and like the people on the bedrooms upstairs like fall on to me like mm-hmm. blah 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 And then I'm like, this house has been standing since the 1800s. I don't think it's randomly going to fall tonight. Just because you're here. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm like, why am I spiraling like this, though? It's so weird. It is weird. Yeah, I've been having anxiety the past few weeks, and I'm like, I need to just calm down. I need to think about that think about it that way like these things that are giving me anxiety I need to be like Mm -hmm. it's fine yeah just like reason a little bit like yeah yeah exactly I mean yeah the worst that could happen is someone could die (laughs) essentially in like any situation but if you're really like you know yeah being rational here like most likely the umbrella is not going to immediately kill someone if the wind blows yeah exactly yeah yeah I love the spirals about manifestation I I feel like we talk about that a lot lot. (laughs) I love it back into the gut feelings when I was a baby the smoke alarm went off in my house when everyone but my dad was asleep he thought it was just the battery since there was obviously no fire so he replaced the battery and headed back to bed however it went off again So thinking it was a malfunction, he just took it apart and was going to deal with it in the morning. He went to lay down and go to sleep, but there was a nagging voice in the back of his head telling him not to ignore the alarm. So he begrudgingly got up and called the fire department, asking them to send a car to come out and check it, but there was no need for fire engines or anything. Being a small town with a big fire department and a large budget, they sent three engines. It turns out there is a carbon monoxide leak, and if my dad had fallen back asleep, it's likely that we all would have died of carbon monoxide poisoning. That little voice in his head, intuition, or whatever it was, saved our lives. I was going to say, I was thinking carbon monoxide if there was no fire. Oh, my God. That's terrifying, though. So scary. Yeah. Wait. They're lucky. That's so scary. Another example of, like, bedside manner, but it's not bedside manner, <laughs> is one time I was in this house that I used to rent right out of college, and I was alone working from home. It was a Monday. That Friday, I forget why. I think something broke. Like, our stove wasn't turning on, so they're Mm -hmm. like, oh, we'll come and check your gauge or whatever. Mm -hmm. The guy comes. He's down outside. He comes back in. We're all just sitting in the living room, and he's like, well, good thing I came because there was a gas leak out there. It was leaking gas, and I don't know how long it's been like that, but don't worry. I fixed it, and we were like, awesome, and then on Monday, I was home alone like two days later working from home and I smelled what I thought was gas Mm -hmm. and I was like holy shit on Friday this guy was just saying that there's a gas leak our thing is obviously malfunctioning and so I call the gas company and I'm like I think I smell gas and she's like do you want me to call the fire department or do you and I was like you can call them if you have their number like she didn't take a second to be like oh maybe it's this like immediately it was just like yeah okay we're calling and she's she's like okay I'll dispatch them immediately Scary. and then yeah and I was like shit before they got there someone from the township came and he wasn't a firefighter or anything just like a township worker had this like detector and went to all the smoke detectors and didn't mm-hmm. find anything then the fire engine pulls up all the People are getting off dressed in the fire outfits, and then a cop shows up, and the guy from the township already checked everything and was like, there's nothing, and he's like, what you're smelling is the construction site up the street. Stop. (laughs) They're, like, fixing the road, and they have, like, the tar or asphalt that they're putting down, and I was like, oh, well, like, I'm sorry, but on Friday there was a gas leak. They're like, it's like, they just left, and I was like, but I was and I was trying to explain that there was a gas leak, and they just were having none of it. They're like, you're smelling construction, bye. And then (laughs) they left, and I was like, they definitely just thought I was some, like, stupid girl who didn't know what she was talking about, and I was trying to explain to them that there was a gas leak, but they just didn't care, and they just left. And I was like, well, I feel so bad that 
all the firefighters just got dressed and came here for nothing. Yeah. But I guess what you said earlier, that's what they want. Like, they don't want a blazing fire that's hurting people and creating more work for everyone. Right. Yeah, at most it's an inconvenience for them, but a lot less stress. My husband was asleep and I heard him having a conversation, thinking he was just talking in his sleep. About a day later, he told me he had a visit from my ex-husband who had recently passed. He started telling me about the conversation and I said I heard you talking to someone in your sleep. He didn't believe me until I told him what he was saying. I said after you finished, you went into a deep sleep, snoring like nothing. Yes, they do visit. Oh, that's so sad. That I mean, well, sad. it's happy. It's like comforting, but yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. I have never had a family member visit me in a dream. I have. Was it comforting or scary? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've actually had a few. Really? And it's always interesting because it's like around times where I haven't really been thinking about them. So yeah. they're not on my mind. Right. Because that would make a lot more sense to me personally yeah. if I was like maybe thinking about them and then that night I had a dream about them. But yeah, recently I had a dream about um, my uncle and he was so happy. And he Aww. was like, we were all like, what are you doing here? We were at his house and we were like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I heard everyone missed me. So I was allowed to come back. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah, it was cute. It was very comforting. So... Wow. Yeah. (laughs) It's nice because he was like just so smiley. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Cute little visit. That's so sweet. (laughs) The week before my mother's sudden and unexpected passing, she told me she had a dream my deceased pappy and uncle carried her away in their arms. She had a deadly brain aneurysm four days later. Stop. That just like confirms heaven for me. Yeah. Or an afterlife, even if it's not called heaven. Like that's so crazy. Ever since my childhood best friend Haley passed away, I have dreams of her telling me she isn't gone, that I just can't see her. At her funeral, her uncle told me every time you find a dime or nickel in places you normally wouldn't, that is Haley saying, hey, I'm still here watching out for you. And damn, do I find a lot of them. Uh, Wow. (laughs) I'm cry. I know. (laughs) I was sleeping one night and felt the presence of someone coming into my room. It literally felt like I could see who it was and I heard a voice say, Don't worry, I'm still here for you. I jumped up and broke down in tears because I knew whose voice it was. My cousin who passed away two years ago. What shook my mom more is that the same night it happened, she had a dream where she saw someone walking in the hall past her bedroom, but she couldn't really tell who it was until I told her what happened to me the same night. Oh my God, that's crazy. The mom saw her walking down the hallway. That's wild. It's always wild when it's like two, it involves two people. Yes. Like two little living people yeah or something because like part of me is like oh anyone has dreams about like I have dreams about my friends if I like a guy I have dreams that I'm with him but it's weird when the person has passed away and then someone else like confirms it yeah so weird like yeah obviously you can have dreams about anyone you're thinking about that day your brain can make things up but what are the odds that they would give you this message and on the same night someone else in your family also experienced the same thing yes exactly like the same night is the craziest part yeah yeah crazy i was clinically dead for almost four minutes during that time i was in a dark room surrounded by people who i could only see silhouettes and no faces i was wanting to go towards a light at the end of the hall but was told twice by a voice that i didn't recognize that it wasn't my time and i had to go back which i was ignoring the third time i was told was distinctly my father's voice who had died in 2007 next thing i know i was waking up with a bunch of people looking down at me saying we got him back did he hear the voice of god that he didn't recognize oh maybe that's crazy that is so weird I wonder if the silhouettes were the people around him on Earth or if they were, like, yeah. other souls or whatever. Yeah. Or if they were both. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what if he was, like, kind of aware that he was, like, right. you know, on the ground? And, yeah. But he was hearing voices. Oh, my. Crazy. Oh, his dad, too. I know. Aww. Some years ago, my parents, still grieving over the recent death of their adult son some days before, wanted to visit my aunt, who was now in hospice care. Out of all the extended family, my brother was one of my aunt's favorites, and we all agreed we didn't want her to know about his death in her final days. So at this visit, there were many stories told and many memories shared. Throughout, my aunt appeared quite alert. My mom said my aunt's attention kept going over to a chair on the other side of the room. She then said my brother... Oh my Wait, this is going to make me actually sob. Oh no. <laughs> she then said my brother had been sitting there for... <laughs> 
had been sitting there for hours that morning and they had been chatting and laughing. Stop. My mother asked, was he still about? Oh my God. <laughs> she said no, but he said he... <laughs> oh no, I can't. Sorry. I can't hear what he said. <laughs> my mother asked, was he still about? She said no, but... He said he would be coming back in the evening. Later that night, the nurses found my aunt had died peacefully in her sleep. To the day our mom passed away herself, this brought her immeasurable peace and belief that her son came back to escort our aunt on her last journey. Mm. I do hope that they came back for my mom when she slipped away gently at the age of 93. Oh my god. That is so crazy. Yeah. Oof. Like, how do you... Wow. <laughs> That is crazy. It's so comforting, but like, oh my God, so sad. I know. But cute, but comforting. It just has like mixed feelings. Yeah. Because it's like part of it is scary, but then it's also comforting and like Mm -hmm. so special. But it is so scary because it's like so heavy and it's something that we just don't understand or that we don't have any answers to. Right. It's just like feelings that we have or like things that you believe. You just have to have faith in them. Exactly. I was just going to say, like, you don't even want to question it either. Right. Because it's like, you'll never get answers, first of all, but also, like, what's the point when it causes so much, like, comfort and, yeah, like, happiness for people, especially in hard times? Yeah. So. That's so true. Aww. That's such a good point. Yeah. When I was 15, my dad was sick, but he was always sick, and he survived so long while being sick on and off. Since my cousins came for the week, my mom decided we should all go to the beach and leave him there for three hours, which is fine usually. So we come back, and I'm unpacking beach stuff with my cousins. I see my mom run out with blood all over her white little swimsuit, say, call 911, while crying. I looked up at my cousin and said, I knew it was going to happen. My cousin overheard the paramedics. They said he was trying to get up, but he was so sick, he must have stopped in his tracks, fell, and hit his head. I didn't have any dreams until the fifth night without him. We all shared our dreams after a week. My mom saw him the the first night in her dream, then my younger sister, then my other sister, then my other sister. She says, I have three. Sorry with the laughing, crying (laughs) emoji. (laughs) Then finally, I had the dream where we were talking about Call of Duty. He then smiled and disappeared into thin air. I woke up with tears all over my face. We put the pieces together and found out he was visiting us to let us know we weren't alone and it's okay now that he's gone because he served his purpose. This is my first time sharing, so please be open-eared. Oh, my God. Every night. He visits yeah, He visits another else. family member. Mm-mm. When my mother was a child, she fell into water. She desperately fought to get back to the surface, but no avail. She became too tired resisting. Described in her own words, she said that the moment when she was about to drown, beautiful music started to appear around her. Music that she could never replicate or describe. All of a sudden, an old man's face appeared in front of her. He looked her in the eyes and said, it is not your time yet. Right after he said that, a hand grabbed her leg and pulled her up to the surface. And it turned out to be her grandmother. She saw my mother fall into the water and sprinted into the water and rescued her. That is so weird. Who is the old man? I don't know. <sighs> oh my God. It's so weird. Just I'm just speechless at all of these. I know. Me too. My grandfather passed last year, and a month or so after his funeral that I drove 700 plus miles to go to, I had a dream with him in it. We were all at dinner, and me and my grandfather were outside. He had his arm around my shoulders, and I was supporting him. I was egging him to come on and keep going, but he completely collapsed on me which is exactly how he passed. It was just my grandmother he was holding on to. I said, Dada, come on. He replied, I have to go, Pee-wee, the nickname he gave me. It's time for me to go. And I hadn't had a dream about him since, but it was so nice being able to see him one last time considering I moved away from home years ago. I miss him. He was such an energetic spirit. Aww. That's so sweet. That is. I had a super serious 12-hour surgery. When I was waking in my room, my deceased eldest brother was sitting on the edge of the other bed in the room, and he told me, Don't be afraid, honey. You will be okay. I drifted back to sleep, but when I woke up later, there was a definite depression on the bed where my brother was sitting when he was talking to me. It made me cry. He is still looking out for me. I love him. I miss him. It's wild when it's, like, physical, too. Yeah. Wow. I died for a minute in a paramedic's ambulance myself. My dead grandma came to me during that time and told me, honey, it's not your time. Tell my baby girl I love her, my mom. 
I did. She burst out into tears, and I didn't really understand the real lesson because I thought it was because of me. A year later, she tells me the story of when my grandma died. She was angry with my mom because my mom wasn't able to stay with her overnight at the hospital. The only person in the family she didn't say she loved was my mom. So to anyone who thinks there isn't something after this life, you're absolutely wrong. Wow. Wait, that reminds me of the movie The Sixth Sense. Oh, Have you ever seen that? Yeah. I don't remember everything that happens. Spoiler alert. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's like towards the end, the little kid is talking to his mom Mm -hmm. about like what his grandmother is saying to her. Aw. Yeah. It was some, I think it was related to like forgiving her for something. Yeah. But it was really cute and sad wow that's a good movie it's like kind of scary but it's like wholesome at the same time i haven't seen it in so long it's so good i need a rewatch yeah there's a comedian skit about that i think i don't remember exactly what it was but they were talking about the sixth sense and they're like it's a 40 year old movie okay he's dead or like whatever (laughs) or 20 year i don't know how old the movie is like we can't keep hiding the yeah um protecting people from spoiling it yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) it was filmed in philly i think really yeah wow i think the director is from philly m night oh is he the director m night Shyamalan. yes i think wait i need to fact check myself he's like the writer or director of our generation yeah he is i actually don't know how old he is yeah he was born in Mahe, India. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. And raised in Penn Valley, Pennsylvania. Hey. And I think a lot of, <laughs> or I think he tries to base a lot of his films yeah. in Pennsylvania. So I, I'm pretty sure The Sixth Sense is in Philly. Wow. Yeah. He directed Split, and yeah. that is set in Philly. She gets abducted at the KOP Mall. The King of Prussia Mall. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And that, yeah. And that I've never seen it. He takes her, kidnaps her, and parts of it are filmed along Kelly Drive in Philly. And then, spoiler, <laughs> when she gets out, she escapes into a zoo, and it's the Philadelphia Zoo. Really? Yeah. Isn't oh my that so God. cool? It's filmed there. That is cool. Yeah. Wait, let me see if it... Yes, Philadelphia. That's the sixth sense. There are so many shows and movies set in Pennsylvania, specifically Philadelphia or Philly area. Yeah. It's like crazy how many there are. I feel like it's almost as many as are set in like New York or LA. I know. There are a decent amount. Yeah. Yeah. Even like Boy Meets World. Like so random, but it's set in Philly or the suburbs of Philly. Um, Like why? The Goldbergs. Wait, what was the... The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. What was the big HBO show that came out like two years Mare ago? Mare Town. Yes. That yeah. was a good one. There's so many. Yeah. Oh, How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. There's so many that are set in Philly. So cool. Love it. Love to see Every it. Every M. Night Shyamalan film. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. (laughs) My mother passed away not long ago. A week or so before, she said her aunt, who passed away about 10 years before, her father, who had passed away 28 years before, and her brother, who just passed away on her birthday a month before, all walked into the room and told her, come on, it's time to go, and walked out of the room expecting my mother to follow. My mother called me and told me this, crying, because she really had a bad feeling something was going to happen to her. She passed a week or so later suddenly. Wow. He said she was recovering from gallbladder surgery in a recovery facility. Unfortunately, a nurse working there had COVID and unknowingly infected her patients. It was a big deal. It hit the news. I was informed by the doctor of the facility herself of the incident. In her weakened state from surgery, she just couldn't handle the infection and passed seven days later. To clarify, her story of her visit from past family members happened before she was infected with COVID, and there were no signs leading to her passing prior to the infection. She was on a good road to recovery. So he's basically saying that it wasn't like her anxiety of like having COVID that was Mm -hmm. creating this false memory. It was like she had no reason to think that she was going to die. She just got Mm -hmm. the feeling. Premonitions are wild. Yeah. Wow. That's scary. Like, come on, it's time to go. I'd be like, what? I now. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't like that, even if it was my loved ones. Yeah. Unless I was like super old. Right. And like at peace with like going and, you know, you've lived a long life. But yeah. Oh my God, how upsetting. Crazy. Before my grandpa passed, he was basically bedridden. He told my mom he had a dream that he saw my grandmother. She passed away very young, and she told him with love he couldn't come up with her as she walked up the stairs. When he was passing in his final days, my mom was taking care of him. And he called to my mom and told her he... No. (laughs) And told her he hears music and singing. 
shortly after he passed. Wow, I just got chills. Mm. And his wife said that she was walking upstairs, like the stairway to heaven. Yeah. And then he heard music and singing. Other Aww. people heard music. Yeah. Wait, I read the beginning of a book of someone who, like, I think was in a car. This is a long time ago. I don't remember the title or anything, but it was a book that someone had written. He was in a car accident and, like, was unresponsive for, I think, four minutes. Technically, I guess, died. Mm -hmm. Um, But he had a experience where he thinks he went to heaven. And he said that the colors that he saw were like indescribable he'd never yeah. he's never seen them on earth and like you can't make up a color in your mind you know what yeah. I mean you just can't like conjure that up in your head right and he said that the music that he heard was the most beautiful indescribable music he's ever heard too that's interesting that a lot of people talk about like yeah. music yeah wait it kind of gets me excited is yeah. that horrible I'm like yeah. oh okay hey, what beats are they dropping up there I know <laughs> I'm like colors and music sounds like yeah. the life yeah it's wow. interesting but comforting. I, it's interesting that we get to like choose what we believe Mm -hmm. I don't really know if I'm going to describe this thought well, but it's so weird that everyone believes something different. And even people that don't believe in heaven still have these experiences. Yeah. Or don't believe in God or whatever. Mm -hmm. I also heard something very recently that the idea of like reincarnation versus like eternal life, because for a while I believe, well, I think I believe in reincarnation I feel like I'm just still figuring it out like I don't even know what is real and what's Mm -hmm. not other than God but I heard this person say that reincarnation is almost a not bad way to think but it could possibly be negative because if you're believing that you get to do this again why would you live this one to the fullest or like why would you take care of the body you have now or whatever And then another person was like, if you think you're going to do it again, like, imagine having to do all this again. It sounds exhausting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know. I almost think like, like what I was thinking is like when you die, maybe you're not just immediately like implanted into a new body, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, if you go to heaven and you meet God and you're like, I really want to do it again. Can I go again? It's like, why would God not be like, sure, do whatever yeah. you want. Like, this is heaven. You can, mm-hmm. like, anything is possible. So I'm like, but maybe. Do you think you would want to leave heaven? Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> so now I'm like, wait, if it's really this great place, like, yeah. maybe reincarnation isn't real. Yeah. Or, like, maybe reincarnation is what some people believe purgatory is. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And then in that thought, it's like heaven is nirvana. I think that most religions believe the same thing, but they have different ways of describing it. So it really breaks my heart when there's like wars and Mm -hmm. fights and hatred that come from different religious beliefs. Because if you think about it, like if there's a God, we're all praying to the same God. So Mm -hmm. regardless of if you're Jewish, Christian, any other religion that I know less about, if you pray to God, like there's only one God. Right. Right. So you're praying to the same person. And if you believe in reincarnation or you believe in purgatory and if you believe in nirvana or if you believe in heaven, like they're all describing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we're really not that different. Right. And the goal is the same. Like this is something that I've thought for years. Like everyone's goal pretty much is the same. Like you live a positive life and you serve others and you take care of yourself and God's creation or the universe's creation, like whatever. You have morals and you try to be a good person. Mm -hmm. So think that deep down we're really not all that different. Right. So whether you believe that like Adam and Eve were two real people that physically Mm -hmm. walked on the earth or whether you believe that that's a really good story that teaches us really important lessons that we should live by. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the difference right. at the end of the day? Yeah. Whether it's real or not. Right. What's the harm? Yeah. Like, the in lesson. One or another. Yeah, yeah. Like, the lesson and the morality and the goal that you get from hearing it is the same. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's just go with it. Yeah. I don't know. I Let's just chill. Yeah. Like, yeah. let's just not hate other people mm-hmm. or, like, think that we believe such different things when, in reality, most people, most of the time, have the same goal when yeah. it comes to religion and ethics and morals. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> That's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that because we grew up Catholic and mm-hmm. so did a lot of our friends. And I was talking about church recently with one of my best friends from Catholic grade school. 
And I just realized, like, after going to the Catholic Church for most of my life, I was like, eh, I want to, like, not do this or, like, this isn't what I think or what I believe. And I feel like that also comes from, like, it being pushed on me for so many years. I'm like, oh, well, I need to experience something different or, like, that's not right or whatever. And then my friend's like, at the end of the day, like, yes, there are bad actors in any field, but... The Catholic Church, the goal of the church is to encourage people to live moral lives Mm -hmm. and give to the poor and feed the hungry and clothe the naked. Right. And I was like, wait, yeah, that Mm -hmm. really is the goal. Like, why was I thinking that it was like so wrong for a few years of my life? And I'm like, it's really not bad. I feel like the institution of the church has evolved further than almost necessary. Like, there have just been such a buildup of, like, rules and laws yeah. to follow that almost, I, I don't know, it'd be more beneficial just to go back to, like, the you original think? teachings. Yeah, maybe. Of, like, feed the hungry, like, yeah. clothe the homeless or whatever it is. Yeah, I do think that in, like, the modern world, there's bad actors in the field. There's people yeah. that get into it for the wrong reasons and then that manifests in like entire communities sometimes I guess yeah but which is so sad but I do feel like most people are good right and they're there because they believe in something greater yeah it's so hard Mm -hmm. yeah I feel like with religion it's like I'm trying to be more open-minded with everyone's religion yeah I like learning about different religions like that because I feel like it helps you be open-minded and it also helps you realize that most of them are very similar Mm -hmm. and like we don't have to just like hate people right because they don't believe that like every single thing is fact that we believe it is or whatever yeah like I think what I was saying earlier is like people get so caught up in the little tiny like rules yeah things that like we follow and that they don't follow so that's wrong like yeah like just there's so many like little things like like fasting for an hour before you go to church as a catholic is like a thing I totally forgot about that yeah I like there's like so many little tiny rules And I was just saying, like, that rule didn't exist when, like, Jesus was on earth. Like, that really? Uh, Yeah, when did that come about? They didn't even have church when Jesus existed. You know what I mean? Like, these rules are made by humans. Yeah. And you can say there was, like, divine intervention for them, but I don't know. Once you get past all these little tiny rules that were made by humans, like, the root of most religions is very similar. It's, like, almost the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad that that's like that, too, because I feel like a lot of things, like, Obviously, everyone has different beliefs, but uh, I think a lot of things can coexist. Mm -hmm. And so just because there is God that Catholicism believes in or that Judaism believes in, whatever, just because that exists doesn't mean that other things can't. Right. And that's the thing with, like, reincarnation and heaven. It's like, well, which one is true? It's like, well, maybe they're both true. Yeah. Like, God can do anything. Yeah. So, like, why can't it all be true? And the same thing with, like, Adam and Eve versus evolution. I was Mm -hmm. just talking to a friend about this, like, a few days ago. It's like, evolution can be real, and God can also make humans. Like, Mm -hmm. God can make humans that evolve, or God Mm -hmm. can make creatures that evolve. Like, I guess the discrepancy is when it comes... Like, the teaching says that he created a man and then he took the man and created the woman. That's not necessarily what I believe. I don't even know what I believe. But Mm -hmm. I just think that a lot of things can coexist. Yeah. And God knows that. Like, he has to be cool. Like, look at what he made. Right. Yeah. That's why I feel like I can look at God and be like, you're such a real one. Yeah. Like, you really got my back. And I respect it. Exactly. (laughs) And it's like, he knows what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And he forgives you for, like, the craziest stuff, you know? Yeah. So why can't we forgive each other? You know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. I was also talking to the same friend about, like, when it comes to forgiving people for their crimes. Because, like, I'm kind of in the mindset of, like, hell. Like, is hell real? Like, come on. Like, who is going to hell? Like, let's be real. Like, name one person that went to hell. Like, I get that (laughs) there's, like... Show me one person. Yeah. Like, come on. (laughs) And, like, I get that there are bad people. And it's like, oh, well, where do these horrible, crazy people like Hitler or, like, Osama bin Laden, like, these terrible figures that walked the earth? It's like, well, what happens to them? It's like, well, it's not my job to decide what happens to them. 
Like, it's not my job to forgive them or to not forgive mm-hmm. them. Yeah. That's God's job. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Here's a cool saying that I learned from TikTok that some of my friends started saying. That's G's J. <laughs> it means that's God's job. So, you know, when you're on your life path and you're like, well, what's going to happen? Like, is this going to work out? Like, I don't know. That's G's J. That's G's J. That's not on me. <laughs> and I just feel like that brings me peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like sending people to heaven or hell. That's mm-hmm. not for me to decide. That's G's J and I'm going to leave that for him. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to start using that. Yeah. It's perfect. I feel like it just helps because it just means that like it's on your side too. Because right. it's like you don't have to take on all the problems that you don't know how to yeah. solve. <laughs> or grant metaphorical forgiveness for like historical figures that did horrendous acts it's like i don't know what happens to them and it's not my job to know it's cheese (laughs) jay and i love that okay let's read a few more gut feelings and then we'll wrap it up cool this episode was so fun yeah i love talking about this stuff i know me too one month ago after surgery my blood pressure dropped so low that it required the crash team to bring me back my husband later told me i was upset as he could not see my father sitting next to me as i was fading away (gasps) wow wait one more crazy thing about health i was talking to my cousin who's a nurse about this I was asking her about fevers, and she's like, well, 98.6 is what you usually are, and then 100 is a fever, but even, like, 99 is a fever. We classify a fever as 100.4. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So 100.4 is a fever, and then 101 and 102 is, like, a high fever, Mm -hmm. and then 104, you, like, die, right? Or 105? Oh, yeah, you're in the danger zone for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrifying if I see that. So, like, <laughs> that's not that big of a difference. Like, isn't that yes. crazy? Yeah. Like, it's such a small scale. Mm-hmm. And then can you go lower than 98? Like, does anyone ever go low? Yeah. What's like, lower? Um, Like, 95, 96 is, like, questionable. Is that dangerous? Um, I guess it depends on the person, but it could be. Okay. You know, just, like, are they a frail old person? Like, that's okay. probably dangerous. But, like, that could be hypothermia. Okay, so if yeah. you have hypothermia, that means your body temperature is dropping? Yes. Okay. I don't really deal with it that much. Okay. Usually people have fevers for me more so than, like, they um, can't keep up their body heat. A lot of, I feel like that's probably more common in the ICU because they have to use warming methods for people a lot up there. Wow. And we actually are not allowed to use warming methods on our um, patients. Like, we're not, not, like, certified. I don't know what the term would be, but, like, it's against our floor's, like, policy. We're not allowed to use the... Uh, like supplies for warming people. Wow. It's an ICU thing mm. as far as I know. Yeah. Interesting. But it's very intense. That's why we can't do it. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. But people definitely have like hypothermia and it's very dangerous. And yeah. They'll, they'll go to the ICU. It's just like crazy how small the scale it is mm-hmm. to become like so dangerous. I know. Wow. Yeah. It's like you could just be like borderline and you're fine. And then it just like jumps like yeah. your blood pressure, temperature, anything just jumps a little bit. And it's like yeah. A different story. It's so crazy that our bodies are just alive. I know. Like, I think about <laughs> that all the time. And I'm just like, our bodies are just doing it. Everything's just pumping and working. Yeah. And we're just not aware of any of it. <laughs> and then what do we do? We just eat and drink yes. and go in the sun. <laughs> and then we're just alive. Yep. And then once we die, we don't come back to life, typically. Right. Like, that is so crazy. Yes. Like, why can't you just come back to life? Yes. Like you die and for what? (laughs) For what? (laughs) It's so weird. Yeah, it is. I don't. Yeah. Mind blowing. That's like how some people think about space. Well, I also think about space as like, oh, I can't even fathom. But it's also like the human body. I'm just like, what is that? Yeah. Ew. I know. It's kind of disgusting. I have those thoughts, too. I'm like, how is this? Like when I do stuff for people that like. I'm like, how can you handle this and still live? I know. Not even anything crazy, but just like we were talking about IVs, just putting something into someone's vein through their skin. Yeah. And they're fine. (laughs) So weird. And you can take it out and the hole will go away. Yes. (laughs) Oh my god! I just and like, the vein literally... will keep flowing. Yes, like... that is crazy. Is. I just like croaked when I said yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. And then I also was thinking about surgery recently, mm-hmm. and a 24 hour surgery. 
is this doctor just standing for 24 hours? And what could possibly take that long? Like you cut it open. In my mind, you cut it open, you take it out, you put the other one in. Like what else is happening here? How can that take 24 hours? Right. Like there is so much that I don't understand. I know. And with surgery, I mean, I, I watched one surgery in nursing school. And I didn't realize it, but it makes sense. But you have to, like, provide, like, full life support almost. Because, oh, yeah. you know what, the person's not awake. They're not functioning on their own. Yeah. So I don't know, like, anything about the operating room. But from my understanding, like, <laughs> you have to have a breathing tube down your throat to help you breathe. Every surgery? Not every surgery. Okay. A but lot the of one them? that I watched, she oh, did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Do you just remember what kind of sure surgery it was? Uh, she had her. She had a nail placed into her femur in her thigh. Wow. Um, because she broke it. Wow. Yeah. But you need to have um a catheter put into like your pee because you're gonna pee. Yeah. Like you know, people are gonna have these normal bodily functions in this 24 hour surgery. Yeah. So you have to account for that and like yeah, they're asleep, so you have to make sure that they're still breathing correctly and like yeah. all this stuff for 24 hours, like full just like care of their whole all of their like functions and everything it's crazy also just thinking about how they figured it out Mm -hmm. like how did they do the first surgery and then what did the person just feel it or were they just like right because anesthesia didn't always exist right it was like put someone to sleep and they somehow came back you know what i mean insane how did they know that they would wake up they probably didn't but (laughs) i also heard recently I don't know if this is true or not, that anesthesia doesn't take away your pain. It just puts you to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's sedation. Okay. And is there another drug that takes away your pain or no, you just don't remember your pain because you were asleep? Um, From my understanding, I would say that sedation doesn't take away your pain. You just don't remember it. And you just like won't wake up to pain. You know how like pain can like bring you out of sleep in the middle of the night? Like you won't. Yeah. Wake up because you're continuously being pumped with these sedating yes. drugs. Okay, because I yeah. think the thing, I think the video I was watching, they were saying like y- the anesthesiologist, an- the anesthesiologist, how do you say that word? Anesthesiologist. The anesthesiologist yeah. has to like watch you. Yes. Because they can then tell if you're about to, or not about to, but like closer to waking up or like in a deeper sleep. Mm -hmm. I would assume so they watch your vital signs my friend is actually in school um, to be a nurse anesthetist so she would have a very good understanding of all of this because she has done surgeries like we should have her on (laughs) yeah Sarah shout out Um, but they watch your vital signs and I would assume maybe like if your like heart rate goes up or something maybe that means like you're in pain or right you're coming to I don't know like your blood pressure might go up okay um, related to like pain or maybe you're like waking up breathing rate like you're Crazy. they're watching all of that and I'm sure that they have it they do have it down to a science they yeah, know. yeah I'm sure they have it down to a I'm science. sure they know what they're doing it's literal science yeah it's actual <laughs> facts <laughs> math yeah um but yeah they're just watching that the whole surgery and they're doing other yeah. stuff too but yeah that's um an important part wow yeah medicine yeah also i'm so happy that i don't work in medicine yeah like it's it sounds so great but i'm just like i am not the one to handle this yes (laughs) (laughs) crazy i feel like when i was going through school i was like there's no way i'll do that or i could do that or i could do that but then it's just like once you learn how it works it makes sense to you and then you're a- you're more easily like yeah able to do it but also like I faked confidence for a lot of it I was like no problem I can handle that mentally even though I was like terrified to do it yeah and eventually I'm like I- actually it's fine like yeah. I can do that now so. yeah because there's so much emotion that goes into it yeah obviously like the human body can do like really gross things yeah and I just read this story forget if this was like a comment on reddit or something but it was like the wife it was a girl dating a guy and then he like had a hemorrhoid or something and started bleeding out of his ass and she had to like hold ice on his (laughs) ass And then they got married, like, years later. A bonding experience. Yeah, and everyone was like, this is real love. And I was like, if I had to do that for someone else, I seriously think 
if I liked the person or loved them, if it was like a friend or a boyfriend, whatever, I would think nothing of it. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't look at them any differently, like at all. But then if I was the person in distress Mm -hmm. and my boyfriend needed to like do that for me or like see me do something embarrassing because it was a human body function, Mm -hmm. I would like never live it down. Oh, yeah. But I'm like, I wouldn't think anything of it Mm -hmm. if it was somebody else. Yeah. But for myself, I'm like, oh, cringy. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? I know. Like, I clean people up all the time, but then I'm like, if I ever yeah. was in this position, I, I would be so upset. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, we think nothing of it for other people. Yeah, like, it's why? Interesting. Yeah. Weird. Okay, let's end with a good one. Okay. I'll do an anesthesia one to end on. <laughs> when emerging from general anesthesia, I saw my recently deceased sister standing in a white room. She said to me, Susan, it's so beautiful here. You will love it. A door opened and I glimpsed pure beauty in a garden. I asked if I could stay and was told no. Heaven. Oh. <laughs> this episode got so deep. Yeah. I went from like ER, yeah. science to like <laughs> God. Heaven. The Heaven. afterlife. Aww. weird wow it was I, like it was wholesome like i like hearing about these like, yeah comforting stories of people like seeing their family members yeah i think they're comforting too yeah i liked this episode clearly i can spiral when it comes to talking about like the afterlife or like spirituality i think most people could though. yeah that's true and yeah. we talk about it a lot we like we've always talked yeah. about we this i think we've said that before on the podcast yeah we, we will gather like our cousins like my older sister Erin my younger sister yeah and we will all just talk about this for hours yes and that was like we were little exactly I was just gonna say like the theme of our life this is all we've talked about (laughs) when we got together like why (laughs) I don't know because it's so interesting yeah yeah. and I feel like also it's always evolving like what we believe Mm -hmm. like I feel like I when I was younger I grew up in a religion and so that's what I believe but then when I got older I'm like oh well there's all these other things that you could believe and I'm like still figuring it out Mm -hmm. so it's just like the way that you see it is always changing like based on your age or experience or beliefs and I'm like my beliefs are just like always changing like it's so interesting it's so fun like what a fun life I know you know to just have all these different thoughts (laughs) and beliefs (laughs) so true to have a brain <laughs> yeah dude a brain i saw this tiktok and it was these scientists or doctors slicing a brain uh-huh and they were using just like a kitchen knife and a spatula to like take pieces of it and everyone was like first of all why are you using a spatula from walmart <laughs> on the brain and then also that's a person like every memory every piece of their personality mm-hmm. is in that like what what is consciousness mm-hmm. i don't get it <laughs> crazy also okay i'm gonna start spiraling again but i'll just leave everyone th- with this thought mm-hmm. when i was in college i took an english class and the professor was like really into talking about consciousness and he's like think about evolution when did we become conscious like maybe this is a point to like disprove evolution mm-hmm. i don't think that's what he was trying to do but it's just crazy if you think about it like If we were an amoeba or like a speck of dust or whatever, and like over millions and billions of years, I guess not billions because no, it would be billions. Uh, Is the earth like six billion years old or four or 10? Something like that. I don't know. It's definitely billions. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. You keep going. I'm listening. Um, We were like, if evolution is what we came from, then we were dust and then we were like an amoeba and then we were... A monkey or whatever i don't know how evolution works but at what point did something change in our brains that gave us consciousness mm-hmm. and that gave us the ability to like understand i mean consciousness is the only way to put it yeah like are animals conscious like yes i guess in a way they are like your dog knows who you are mm-hmm. and like animals are so smart but consciousness right that's a different level and it's like how is that described in science crazy crazy just think about consciousness if you want to spiral yeah i know and i do (laughs) but i feel like it's um like you're able to like question stuff yes that's what it like critical thinking skills like yeah can an elephant critically think maybe right can a dolphin 
like kind of spider i don't but also like know. self-awareness like is yeah. an elephant aware of itself in the same right. way like the human is and like does an elephant know that space exists or does an elephant know like the shape right. of the earth like or is that self-awareness and why are humans the only one with it i know and when did it start i was gonna say maybe it's the ability to feel love but like dogs definitely yeah. feel love and yeah and there is those um or like that one gorilla, I forget her name. Coco? Yes. Yeah. The, she knew sign language. Yeah. And she could empathize with um, a human who was pregnant and had like lost her baby or something like that because Coco also lost her baby, I think. And she could like, oh she said something that showed like empathy towards this woman. Crazy. Yeah. Who knows, guys? <laughs> I'm like overwhelmed now i tried to look up how old the earth is and it didn't load but it makes me think of that one picture of a journal entry and it was like today is the fourth of july like happy birthday earth you are yes. 2010 years old or something do you know what? yes what I'm talking about. yes wait i was just thinking about or talking about time and stuff like that mm-hmm. with friends like that is so funny that people think that the earth is just 20 23 years yeah. old. Mm-hmm. And here's an interesting fact that somebody told me, and I did not fact check, so it might be wrong. AD, you know how BC is like before Christ? AD, it doesn't stand for after Christ. Um, mm-hmm. It's like a Latin word, but right. AD starts about three years before Christ was born. Really? Because they didn't have AD and BC before Christ was born. You yeah. ever think about that? Yeah. Like the day that Christ was born, they weren't just like, oh, let's call that BC and right. we'll call this number one. No one like, knew. They didn't, they didn't say that at the yeah. time. Time was created later. Well, not, not time, but like that calendar that we use. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we use a calendar. And then <laughs> time. It's like, and then people are like, oh, time is fake. But it's like, time is measured in like the sun. Yeah. Like the earth and like circles. We age. Yeah. Yeah. The earth circles around the sun in 365, actually 364.25. And that's why leap year or really? days. And that's why leap years exist. Because it's not a perfect 365. Yeah. It's like, who figured that out? Aristotle? No, he was a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> like I just spiral when yes. I think about these things. Yeah. There's just too many questions. Too many. And like I said earlier, I'm like, oh, like speculation of this doesn't even make a difference. Or like questioning like these dreams and stuff. Like who cares? Because they're providing people comfort. But then here we are, like we're questioning everything. I know. (laughs) I know. I mean, I think it's okay to question everything, even the things that you believe. And I feel like with God, if you question the existence of God rather than just accepting it, because when you were little, you grew up in a church, like when we were little. We grew up in a Catholic church and we were like, oh, God's real because our parents say it's real. Mm -hmm. And the church says it's real. I almost feel like it's better to question it because then you come to this not even belief, almost like a knowing. And you find faith outside of just what someone tells you is true. Right. And you're not just accepting a reality that was presented to you. You're critically thinking and finding evidence on your own. Mm -hmm. And since it's spiritual, you don't need to, like, prove it with scholarly articles. I was going to say it it feels even more powerful that you have this belief without any answers. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Or your answers are only for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think that's true in science. Like, definitely don't gather your own information (laughs) and then just use it without (laughs) scholarly articles and credible sources. But when it comes to spirituality, Mm -hmm. that's the place for that. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. (laughs) I liked this episode. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. I think it's going to be really long. We were sitting here for a long time. Yeah. I might have to cut out some of my rambling, but we'll see. Yeah. Feel free to cut mine out, too. (laughs) I kind of want to just throw it up there and see what happens, though. Who knows? If you like this episode, please tell us. That would be great. And subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel and rate it five stars. And if you have any experiences that are crazy or unexplained, comment them or DM us because I want to hear mm-hmm. more. I They're love so these. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.